Yo, what is going on, people? Welcome to Throwdown, episode 439. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. What's up, people? How's it going? Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Adam Vale. How you doing? How you doing? And joining us once again as a special guest, Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. Starfield is game of the year, apparently. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's crazy. Rich, man, thanks for being on. Yo, you're like becoming a regular now, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You know? um, but there's a lot going on in the industry, and we obviously want your, you know, your expertise, man. So thanks for being on again, bro. Oh, it's always a pleasure talking with you, gentlemen. And, of course, interacting with the fans. It's going to be a fun show tonight. Definitely, man. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Weapon X, Reggie Butler, who joined us on <laughs> Throw Around Your Questions. Very interesting episode, as Rich would say, you know. Um, yeah, Reg, Reggie, Reggie, he's family, you know, so it's always good to have him on. Um, and, okay, speaking about um, regulars, so Brett will be on in about 20 minutes. He's getting off of work. Um, we don't know what's going on with, with Chris. And Brian will be back in July-ish. He's still sorting out his whole moving situation, but he's doing good. He checked in with us. Everything's fine. It's just, you know, um, it, you know, if you guys move, you know how that shit could be, you know, all encompassing. So, you know, but Brian's doing good uh, over there in the Englands, you know, drinking tea and all that shit, whatever they do over there. You know, <laughs> he's like saluting the king, <laughs> you know, he'll be, he'll be back and be like, kept you waiting, huh? Kept you waiting, <laughs> huh? You know? I, I was talking to somebody, and they were like, yo, you should have Brian say this. I'm like, you realize Brian doesn't have that funky London accent, right? He speaks regularly, you know? He hey. doesn't, you know, it's like, oh, oh, oi, 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 you know? Like, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't have a Cockney accent. No, he doesn't, no Cockney accent, but he also doesn't have that that kind of thick London accent, you know? Like, you could spot a fucking London accent a mile away, you know? The, the, the London accents are kind of like the, the equivalent of like New York accents. They break shit off at the end. You know, they don't pronounce the whole thing. You know, like, it, like, let's, I, I love you. Gary, you got one of those accents, bro. <laughs> you know, I still remember mm -hmm. Gary's telling me about his song, like, you know, because he's the rap and stuff, that song out of order. But when he says like, Ow, oh, uh, I'm like, those are vowels, bro. Those are words. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, shout out to Gary, man. You know, huge inspiration. He's still doing his thing out there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, published author, which is something a lot of journalists can't say, you know. So shout out to Gary. Gary always wants to be on Throwdown, but, you know, the time differences is kind of fucked mm -hmm. up. Um, but Gary, he's always here with us in spirit. I know he's listening right now. So shout out to you, Gary, man. You're my brother for life, man. And uh, with yeah. that, let, let's get into it. So, yes, non-E3 week is officially over, and there are still some things we got to discuss. And the main reason we have Richard on tonight is because he was actually there in L.A. during most of this, you know, f festivities, you know, so he's going to give us some firsthand <laughs> for, accounts. For a second, I thought you were going to say fiasco. No, no, fiasco. Yeah. <laughs> is Summer Game Fest over? Yeah, it's over, yeah. I so, thought it was like multiple days or nah, weeks. I, or something. You, you know, I'm glad you bring that up, Adam, because I think Summer Game Fest is just just one day now. Because it used day. to be that, right? I, I remember. It. Yeah, I, I was like, damn, no, no, like, right. yeah, no, it's it's just like this. It, it, if you think about it, like these companies on their own created E3 Week without the ESA. Oh, no, no, Pretty no, interesting, no. right? It's like street fairs, you know. It's yeah. like oh, it's a holiday, and then a street fair <laughs> opens up, yeah. and then it's down. Oh, what, what's the celebration? Yeah, no, we just put some shit together. That's, That's our celebration. It. Show up and bring your wallet. Oh, yes, okay. yeah, with the, with the hot dogs, at, with the burgers, at, exactly. You know, <laughs> yo, they're over there, you know. Oh, yo, they, oh, you we got, got a traffic for this shit, you know. I can get some fal falafels. Oh, you okay, know? let's do that. Jerky. All right, got a jerky truck. Yeah. So, so rich man, regardless with them story. So. Like, when did you arrive in L.A.? And j just tell us what the general vibe was. And, you know, tell us about all the shows you attended, whoever you ran to, anything, man. Uh, again, give us exact details. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, my initial plan was to arrive Thursday because I actually had tickets to go to the Summer Games Fest uh, stream that everybody saw from the YouTube theater. Now, I say that was my plans because it did not work out that way because my flight was delayed. Uh oh. So by the time I got to L.A., they were already starting to let people in at the event. So I, I ended up 
just going to my hotel to check in because I already had appointments for the next two days. Mm -hmm. uh, so just to clarify one thing about Summer Games Fest, for everybody that watches the stream, it's, it, it, it's, it, it is only one day, but if you go to this event, they have Summer Games Fest play days. That's two days where media and content creators get to actually play whatever games they potentially showed at, at the actual show. Uh, and it just so happens that this year, around that time, it, it, it timed up with the Microsoft Xbox uh, showcase as well as the Ubisoft showcase. So actually, it was a couple of days because it had all these different things happening. But um, basically, to start off, you know, my my first day started off on Friday. I saw a couple of different games. And some of these games, I've actually already started to write previews about. You you can see on the website, thecoalition.com. So the first game I saw was Mortal Kombat 1. I thought that was excellent. Um, didn't really get to interview anybody. I did run into our very good friend, Hip Hop Gamer. You of know, course. I saw him frequently. Yeah, I saw him frequently throughout this trip. And uh, he was very excited, you know, but let, let me just go ahead and give a shout out to Hip Hop Gamer because this actual event that they have it at, it's at a, yeah, it's this place called uh, Social Club. It's like, it, it's like a bit of a venue. It's it downtown Los Angeles, but it's like a very secluded area and it's kind of small. Um, but what they did this year is that they actually had different sections on a map to let you know okay, a, a studio who is actually at the event, they'll be in this section, so on and so forth. So they actually did a very good job with the actual map that they laid out. And I took pictures of some of this stuff, which you can also see on the Coalition Instagram. I'll probably put some of that stuff on the website as well. But uh, pretty much that first day, I played Mortal Kombat. I, I, I played Re Remnant 2, which is a game that I know that uh, Brett is very much looking forward to. So uh, yeah, I'm sold on that. Uh, Alan Wake 2, which I thought was Ooh. fantastic because I got a chance to see that. Now, I want to make it very clear. We did not get to play that game because... Okay, I, was, I was just about to ask you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they played it for us, but the entire demo was running on PlayStation 5, dev kit. Uh, so I guess they wanted to show us how it looked. And again, it looks very much how it looked when they showed the presentation of it. It, it looks like it's a lot of fun. i uh, looking forward to that. Um... And they and towards the end of the day, they actually had a Tekken 8 mixer. Like, you know, because that's the yeah. one thing that... And, and this reminds me of when we go to E3. They have these little parties and so on and so forth where you can go and meet different people. So I did see Jeff Keighley quite uh, several times while I was there. I saw him engaging in conversations with Phil Spencer. I don't know what those conversations were. I know uh, it was very funny to see that, though. But... Hmm. Let me just I, let me just say this. I do want to give a shout out to Hip Hop Gamer because we always make the jokes about Hip Hop Gamer is always excited every time you see him. And that is true. But what he does is anytime he goes to these events, like it could be a random person there that he doesn't even know. He'll just go up to them and start dapping them and saying, what's up? <laughs> and it's funny this time because there was a security. Every time we come into the into the actual event, there's security did outside. Have have to, did he have a belt? Of course he does. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he always has that everywhere he goes. But pretty much, uh, but 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 the funny thing is, like every time I went to the venue, every single day, security would be right there. You have to go through the security, you know, metal detectors, all that other stuff. This guy was out there dapping up the security. I people. knew it. I knew it. <laughs> he was dapping up fucking security guards. <laughs> and, 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 and the PR people as well, because the PR people are sitting behind the desk welcoming everybody, and he was all shaking hands with everybody. So yeah, I yeah, I, yeah this this guy is very entertaining. I, I I was very entertained by that. Yeah, um, well, bro, real quick, not, not to derail things. Uh, and Manny, you've yeah. spoken about this, but like if Hip Hop Gamer helped you get not a foot, like a like your body in the industry, you know. So shout out to him, man. He he really helped change your life, you know. Manny, you're muted. Uh oh. Uh, the one thing, the one thing about Hip Hop Gamer, unlike I would say a lot of people in the industry, not you know, not uh, you know, president company excluded, you know, yeah. and a few and a few other people, but he is a type of person that he's not looking to uplift himself mm -hmm. just based off of you. 
You know, yeah, in other words, exactly. it's not what can you do for me like a lot of these people tend to be. Mm -hmm. Hip hop, the, 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 the when because here's the thing, like we known hip hop for so a lot so long, just seeing him at E3, and for all those years, he actually never knew that I did artwork for a living. Yeah, until oh, wow. we we got to talk until we got to talking into 2019, and this dude, as soon as he found because because he, he saw me doing contra and all that stuff, this dude, as soon as I, I'm you know there, he's calling up his beat beat buddies, trying to spread my name around. You know, yeah. So I'm like, that's the person that doesn't seem to forget you. Know? And also, you know, I was have to say that during during the pandemic, he he was he wasn't he was one of those people that like literally did a whole stupid Twitter post, you know, because my mom passed away. No, what he did was he contacted me personally and he talked to me. Him and Red. Yeah. So man. and you know they 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 helped me get the job with Decoy Games doing some sanity. So. You know, he's the type of guy that doesn't forget you. Yeah. So I wanted to bring that up because hip hop, you know, yeah, he may be kind of wild and flamboyant, but he's the real dude, man. He he will look out for his people, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh, by the way, real quick. Uh, shout out to Chris. He showed up under the cover of night. Hello, Chris. What's up, Chris? <laughs> hey, yeah. hey. And Brett just showed up as well, man. I, I stuck in the door behind Chris. I like that. I like that. So, yeah, we got the full house here. Awesome. Um, all right, Rich, continue. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Hip Hop Gamer dapping everybody as always. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Shout outs to him for sure. Uh, so, pretty much, that was how my Thursday wrapped up on Friday. I had a few different appointments. I did get to play the Cyberpunk expansion. Ooh. Uh, that was awesome, but uh, way too short because my, you know, obviously the appointment time is only for like 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Uh, you you don't re really get to scratch the surface of that game in that in that amount of time. But I, I was very impressed with that game. Right after I played that, I say, yeah, you know, I, I think that they definitely have rebounded now because there's a lot to look forward to in that in that in that uh, upcoming expansion. They did mention that uh, this is, I guess, the final expansion. Because I guess after this, they're working on whatever the next project is, whether it's The Witcher or what have you. But uh, that was a lot of fun. I did enjoy that. Um, I Does also did the base game at all. Well, say what? Does it change the base game? I I had heard somebody just in passing basically mention that like uh, it had kind of secretly either rebooted or re re kind of refurbished a bunch of systems or anything like that. Is there any truth to that, or they were just talking shit? Uh, well. No, it, it, I mean, it does continue after the main campaign. The story takes place afterwards. They made changes to some stuff, but I, I have to admit that when the when the base game came out, because I actually was, was planning to review it, I could not play it because it was so many issues with it because it wasn't working properly on next gen. So I, I've only recently gone back to it right before I you know, knew that I was going to have this appointment. Um, I didn't get into any of the stuff that significantly changed. Uh, I, what I can say is that they did add a lot more of the vehicular combat in the game because there's a new oh, car that I was able to use. I was able to use that car and shoot up a whole bunch of stuff. So that that was pretty cool. Do you um, need to have completed the campaign to play it? Or is it like, oh, you get this and you'll get this level 30 whatever character to play the DLC? Oh, no. You 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 can definitely play it without completing the main game, at least from what I understand. Yeah, I was going to ask you: Is it a standalone, or do you need to have the main game installed? Like, how does this work? Do well, you know? I, yeah, yeah, I believe you do need to have the main game installed okay. because, yeah, yeah, yeah they call it a DLC I, for it. That's it. So yeah, but I'm but I ask because needed. the game you could you, it's only current gen. It's not last gen. You know. Like, yes. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what uh, I was wondering. Okay, go ahead. So so you you do have an option of uh they, they are obviously encouraging everybody to play the uh you know the original base game. But yeah, if you just if you're jumping into the first time, you could totally just do that with this expansion. Cool. Um because it is next gen only. So yeah, and but, uh, is it true that it takes place in a different city? Yes, it yes, it yes it is. Okay. Uh I believe it's called Dogtown. Town. This is a different district uh, within. Just to give a quick summary of what it is, yeah. it's more of like a spy thriller storyline because you basically have to rescue the president of the United States, and when you do that, then you're trying to uncover who was the one that that actually did a hit on her. Is it like Escape uh, from New York?
Yeah, yeah. The the enemies are a lot tougher in Dogtown. That's that that is that was so. There's a lot, but they, but again, and then at the end of the de towards the end, end of the demo, that's when you ask. Okay. Um, but again, I didn't I didn't really get a chance to dive too deep into it because it was only a, a short period of time to play for the hands on impressions. Um, but the game looks fantastic. Something I'm looking forward to in September. Yo. Uh, so look for that. Um, I also got a chance to check out. A game that I know that Tony Polanco did say he's very uh, interested in hearing feedback on. It's a game called Foam Stars. <laughs> yes. yes. I uh -oh. was curious yes. about this because because uh, the reason I bring this up is because I saw a lot of people. Because remember, it, 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 it was premiered or whatever during the PlayStation Showcase. We were all like, what the fuck is this uh, Splatoon bullshit? But then on Twitter, I saw a lot of cats were like, yo, this game is legit. I'm like, are they trolling right now? Since so they're offhand, you know, April Fool's joke, what, what's going on? Um, so, yes, yeah, Rich, I definitely want to hear your take on this controversial game. So I did see a lot of people saying that it was very positive. You know, a couple of uh, popular YouTubers were in my same session when we were playing the game. Um, I will say this. I think the game is okay. Uh, I don't think it's revolutionary, obviously. It's it's just like Splatoon. Obviously, the difference is that you're using the foam, but the way they design it is the characters have a lot of guns, but even those guns, they're just shooting out foam. Like You have a character that has a shotgun, shoots out foam. And pretty much what it is is it's the game, they only had one game mode that we were able to play, which is like a five-on-five -five competitive matchup where basically you have to foam, foam up the other foam up and eliminate the other people on the other team until there is a winner. Uh, and you have like a service, you have several number lives, but until you, until it gets down to the very end and then, or oh, if you get, well, if you do get foamed up this time, then it's game over. Um, the game is all right. But I, the, the, the thing I have to say is again, I, I could kind of see it's still in the early stages. It does take place in this casino stylized city. And as soon as I saw that, I said, okay, well, this must be where the microtransactions will come into play. Mm -hmm. Because even though they didn't talk about that stuff in the preview, I, I kind of, I saw that immediately. Oh. It's very apparent. They make it very clear to you, this is a casino type city by the way this city is designed, even the way that the actual place that you're playing in is, is actually designed too. So um, obviously, I don't know what to expect, but I will say... It, it is something different. I guess you could say that depending on if you want to play something different. I don't personally think it's the game is for me. Um, but again, they got to show a, a hell of a lot more than what they did show. That's why I was so surprised when I saw our previews coming out talking about it's amazing. It's game of the year, bro. They only show one mode. How the hell can you come to that conclusion mm. that it's game of the year? That doesn't make any kind yeah, of that's sense. Stupid. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But that was really the only game, like, you know, they had a couple of mobile games Square Enix did at their particular booth. Uh, they didn't have anything else that stood out outside of that. Um, but pretty much, like I said, I had a couple of appointments that day. That was Friday. Now, obviously, no, no, that was Saturday, rather. Now, the next day, this is the, this is the day you want to hear about. The Xbox yeah. Showcase event. Oh, let's go. I went to that Xbox showcase event. Obviously, you know, I had to get there a little bit earlier. And of course, what I did learn from last year is if you are media, if you do get invited, you actually go all the way to the top of the building, um, the balcony. They have like a whole area for you. So yeah. you have an option of either watching the show outside on the balcony where they have a whole bunch of screens or you can go into the theater. So I went into the theater obviously because it is a fan fest event you know that they have for people that so they did have a crowd in there um obviously i i think the xbox showcase was good there's a couple of issues i had with some things they showed in that showcase but overall i thought it was an excellent showcase one thing i do want to say though uh whoever decided to put that hellblade trailer in there the audience reacted to that because one thing I noticed when I was in there, everybody obviously, you know, it's a fan fest event, right? You're expecting the fans to cheer for everything that they saw. Okay. Obviously, they saw Fable. The crowd went wild. They saw different games. They saw that Star Wars game. The crowd went wild. When it, when it got to Hellblade 2, though, 
it started out where everybody was like, when they saw that that sign that said Ninja Theory, oh, they was very excited. Oh, then when they actually saw the trailer, there was like that was probably the one trailer where afterwards you could hear a pin drop in there. There wasn't any. It wasn't. It wasn't much clapping compared to everything else that we saw prior to that and after that. So that tells me again, and I even question when I saw that trailer, it's like I'm asking myself if this is Microsoft's attempt to sell a game, sell somebody on the game for the very first time. I don't think they did a very good job with that trailer. There wasn't no damn action in it. It's just about the story elements with the character, which is OK. But that's not a trailer that you should put in a showcase if you're trying to sell someone on the game for the very first time. Damn. That's just my opinion. Um, but after the event, you know, because. You you all yeah. saw the stream. I saw that y'all had a reaction to it. But after the event was over, uh, this is what people may not know. Um, so when everything ended, because, you know, the stream, everything is pre-recorded. But after it was over, we had Phil Spencer came out on stage, Mad Booty, um, Sarah Bond, Pete Hines, and, and uh, I think it's, what is it? What is it? T Todd Howard. They came out on stage to thank the fans for attending. They all had said their little thing. But what one one thing I did hear, uh, you know, that they didn't very pull at no point and say, look under your chair, you all got a series X. They didn't, they didn't do that. Oh no, 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 no. They they did they didn't they didn't go into that. They didn't go into that detail. But uh one thing that Matt Booty said that was very interesting is he did say, We very much look forward to you playing this incredible lineup of games within the next 18 months to two years. Hmm. Now, if you go back to the show, you saw there were some games didn't have any type of release date. Okay. And then there were some that did say 2024. So I think that that was said as a safety net. So what I'm basically telling you right now is if some of those games that they announced for 2024, they definitely can get pushed out further because oh, okay. if it said, if it said 2024, it, but it's not a specific date. That means it definitely can change. Um, but I find it interesting how he mentioned that, you know, to us after the show. But another thing I also want to bring up is Starfield, right? Starfield looks amazing, right? The question I have for Microsoft is why wasn't that 30 frames per second thing said in the actual show, in the actual showcase? I don't really care too much about it, but I think... When you don't say this stuff in the actual show itself, it's going to give people a bad impression because they're like, oh, this is why they're having a debate right now about it. But I don't give a damn. I was impressed with what I saw. I'm going to get the game. I just uh, I had that as a general question because that was definitely that, a discussion Rich. afterwards. I'll say what? I have a theory about that. Go ahead. I, Go ahead. I, I honestly think it was that they've, they because they never said that there was like. From through most of development, I thought they'd made it pretty clear that this thing was going to be 30 frames per second. And so, like, I kind of view this as, like, why would I, as a producer of something, go out of my way to state something that looks bad on me that I never promised to begin with? And, like, I think that was probably mm. the angle that they were taking. And, like, it just, the the rest of the industry kind of brought the question up. It, it, it made it a necessary question. But, like, I could have told you, I have been saying for months and months and months, like, this thing's going to be 30 frames per second, man. It, it like, makes sense because there's two points of uh, view perspectives. You have the third person and the first person. So if they want mm -hmm. a, a smooth experience for both, lock it down. And I'm sure it probably could do a little higher, but it wouldn't be consistent when you're switching between views. So Yeah, but the thing is, you people need to be explicitly told this stuff. That's the problem, <laughs> you know? Well, and, and that's the thing. Like, they, they, like, to me, the, like, when they say, like, you know, is this thing going to be 60 frames? Is this thing going to be high fidelity? And they say, our games are about making as deep and immersive experience as possible. And we are not willing to cut out any systems or make any shortcuts in order to hit those fidelity landmarks. So no, we're focusing more on depth of gameplay um, and that it'll, it'll be stable, but that, that if they have the choice between fidelity or systems that they're going to choose systems every time yeah like, no, I, me, I i i, I sounds guess very wordy no no no, for no, the thing is, no no the thing is they said that after the fact that uh, what i'm trying to say brett is i'm not saying they should have said 30 frames a second i'm saying people should not have assumed that because most people 
need to be told. Is well, they, a very, they said the thing that I said. Yeah. They said that well ahead of this showcase. Ah, they yeah, said but, that but, but here's the thing. They, like Adam said, that's too wordy. You need, for people, they need to be told 30 frames a second, 60 frames. They don't care about all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know yeah. That's just, the problem. You know, I, I feel like, and I realize it's too wordy of an answer, and I realize it's a bit of a corporate answer, but people go like, is this game 60 frames per second? I feel like the right answer is still like, no, we focused on this other stuff. And I can see why people would want to be told like, yeah, no, it's 30 frames per second. But like, you just ask, like, that just, that sounds like an unrealistic ask, right? Like, like hey, oh, no, I agree with you. It's just that makes people, you sound terrible. Yeah. I, you know, I 100% agree with you. It's just people need to be told this stuff explicitly. That's the problem now, you know? Yeah, but then that's question. all that they hear. Yeah. No, well, you're right because the, a week later, that's all anyone's still talking about when, when, it, when it comes to this game. Even though, again, I love the fact that we are recorded here on Throwdown. I told you guys from the jump, the only reason yeah. you're getting 60 frames a second games is because they're last-gen games. The instant we start getting current-gen games only, they're going to go right back to 30, and we're already seeing that. Gotham Knights, Redfall, Starfield, it's already happening, people. And I know people are going to go, oh, what about Insomniac? The exception to the rule is not the rule, okay? So keep that in mind. It's the exception that proves the rule. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Is there is there a triple A first person shooter that's not close to sixty frames per second? No, uh, and, and Redfall, yeah, and Redfall has no excuse to not be <laughs> motherfucking yeah, sixty that's frames. That's bad. a shooter. Um, yeah. but 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 the, but the point still stands. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys should. I I was thinking about this this week. I even had a conversation with this in the office. Like, it kind of seems to me like it was kind of cruel to give people 60 frames a second games knowing they were going to pull that rug out from them eventually. You know what I'm saying? Like, this generation took so long to finally get started, you know, because we were just playing all these last-gen games and people were just used to 60 frames, right? And me knowing, oh, that shit's going to, they're going to pull that shit right from under you and it's already (laughs) happening, you know? So it's like kind of fucked up that it's like you gave them this, but you're going to take them right away, you know? Um, Anyway, go on, Rich. Starfield, yeah. Go ahead. Oh yeah, so I mean, pretty much that was the end of the Microsoft event. Uh, then I then I went to a Final Fantasy 16 launch event. Oh, very interesting. And, yes, that was that was that was quite an experience. You know, got a chance to see the cast. Uh, I also learned um, just you know as far as the gaming industry is concerned, how they are moving more towards the content creators as also helping to put together these shows because. They had two different segments. They talked about combat, where they had the combat director, and then they also had uh, YouTuber Maximilian Dude. He yeah. basically was up there talking with them about it. And then when they did a narrative panel with the narrative or, uh, person behind Final Fantasy 16, they had Alana Pierce uh, up there because, you know, she yeah. helped out on the God of War. So that was very interesting to see that. Um, but overall, that was a great event. You know, and then that was when they announced that, that yeah, there's going to be a demo coming out shortly thereafter that everybody knew about that news. I think the biggest takeaway that I had from that event also is when they confirmed, they pretty much said that Platinum Games helped out on the game as well as the team behind Kingdom Hearts. Uh, yeah. Now, they wouldn't, they wouldn't specify and say exactly what parts of the game they worked on because it's still under an embargo. And I guess they, they did say once the game is released, they'll confirm that information. But uh, everybody was very excited to hear that because that was not an announcement that they was expecting to hear, especially with Platinum Games. Because I, Yeah, I, that was I a guess big they, shot. They helped, yeah. out, they, they helped out with the combat, I guess. But yeah. we'll see. Uh, so finally, that concluded Sunday. And then Monday, which is the day that I left, I actually went to the Ubisoft Forward. And... Uh, that was quite a show. I know uh, we're going to talk about that here soon. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that that was that was a good experience. Right after that, I got a chance to play the Prince of Persia game. By the way, that game runs sixty frames per second on everything. Even on because Switch. I also played on, on Switch. Switch. Did, yes. did they explain when they first said it's a, it's a side scroller, but then they said it's a side scroller open world? How does that work? 
Uh, I didn't get it. Well, I didn't get a sense. I, I didn't get a sense of it being open world because even in that demo, it be open world? Some, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's why I don't no, understand no, no. why they said that. It's yeah. like it makes no damn sense. I was that's like, how is this? That, a, yeah, that's I mean, I mean, it, it, it is a side scroller where you can go into different places on you know in different areas of the actual where, where, of the actual where, where you're actually at. But even in the demo, some of those places they had blocked off where I couldn't go in a certain direction. But obviously that would change, they said, in the final release. Yeah, I'm guessing uh, there's going to be some kind of Metroidvania type of deal, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. The hey, listen, the game is a lot of fun. I'm yeah. looking forward to that yeah, game. So I, I, yeah. After the demo specifically, I was like, yeah, this this, yeah, this, this is pretty I mean, solid. To me, that, that was the biggest yeah. surprise out of all of it. Because remember, that was in development hell. And we had heard that nothing was happening, that they scrapped it again. No, that's a that's, that, that's, that's that's that time. one. That's that was that one? one. Oh, that's, that's a different one. Okay. Yeah, that's a different one. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. This is this is this is a new one. This is a new one specifically. They made that clear in the when they, the presentation and then yeah. the when I actually went to the appointment. Uh, and I did see, of course, Assassin's Creed, a couple of different things they showed in that video about some of the stuff they added to the game. Um, it's still more, more, more or less the same stuff that was seen in the video that everybody saw. They just basically talked about more things with the Nexus. And I will say that Assassin's Creed Nexus with VR, that actually, obviously, that video is not um, the finished uh, rendered gameplay. You know, but I, I'd very, be very curious to see what it looks like, what it's actually going to look like, because it is a good concept. I just want to see how it actually works. Um, yeah. But overall, uh, in a nutshell, I, I would say that the experience was great. Now, I want to say the two main takeaways that I do have to say is that this event is going to continue to grow. It already felt like this year compared to last year, there was a hell of a lot more people there. And you felt in some of those spaces, it got very crowded very quickly. So I think that Jeff Keighley eventually is going to have to expand this and go to a different venue other than where he goes to right now. Uh, I like how they were very accommodating of anybody that was there as a guest. You didn't have to worry about spending money on anything because they had food trucks. If you got hungry, they had drinks, they had bars, all this other stuff. So all that was cool. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing I will say, though, and this is the final takeaway, is that compared to E3, it is missing, um, I would say, what I enjoyed about E3 was obviously seeing all of our peers there. And being yeah, able man. to talk with them about games and stuff like that. that So it did not feel the same. I mean, obviously, I saw Danny. I saw Paris. I saw Hip Hop. I, I didn't see you there, Tony. I didn't see no. any of you guys there. So it didn't feel the same. Yeah, man. No um, yard house, you know, at the end of the week, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I did. I did. But I did go by the convention center. I did because where I was at with my hotel, I was like right downtown. So I did see. The convention center looked very pitiful with no uh, nothing up there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the banners and all your thing. Yeah, that's right. And even the the big posters on the the like the adjacent hotels and shit. None of that, right? Oh yeah, N they, yeah. There was there was no advertising any anywhere, so it, it definitely felt bare. You felt like it was missing. But I will say that uh, Jeff Keighley definitely is onto something because even last year when I went to that event. The only major game they had last year was Street Fighter Six, and that was just yeah. like you playing a demo build. This year, you had Alan Wake Two, you had Remnant Two, you had—I mean, they had a hell of a lot more games. They had Mortal Kombat there, so it would, obviously it's growing. So I'm very curious to see what happens next year. But I do have to give him props that uh, he's doing a very good job with these shows. I just want to see where it goes uh, from here. Yeah, I think you know. From what I saw, like as an outsider now, you know, because I am now in a different industry. You know, by the way, real quick, <laughs> I just find it funny how for years, right, you know, when I was attending in three and all that, I would always like look at um, Twitter and see people talking about Apple because Apple always had their events during E3. I'm like, look at these dumbasses covering Apple. I'm over here having fun at E3. Now I'm the fucking <laughs> idiot covering Apple while everybody's having fun at non-E3, you know. Um, pretty interesting. But no, I, some of the pictures I saw, I saw, you know, Rich, I saw cats at the JW, you know, where uh, one of our frequent <laughs> hangouts. I'm like, damn. And then I even saw like a nice shot of somebody, you know, like a table of like 20 people at the yard house. I'm like, man, that was us, 
you know? Yep. Um, so I, I definitely miss those days, but you know, I'm no longer in that industry, unfortunately. And I, 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 I definitely will not be able to go. Cause it's like, Tony, you got to cover apples. Like, God oh, damn, <laughs> you know? Um, but, but, but it was cool to see, you know, everybody out there having fun. And if this does replace E3, that's a good thing. You know, um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Jeff Keighley is treating the companies better than, you know, the ESA does, <laughs> you know, um, but, oh, yeah. I'm, but, but I'm glad you had fun out there, man. And I'm pretty sure you'll be back next year and it'll probably be even better than this year. Well, it sounds like he's oh, yeah. treating them not, he's treating them like he's there to help as opposed yeah. to either was more like you guys have to <laughs> bend the knee to us, yeah. you know? Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. No, uh, a hundred percent. Um, one, one quick thing I didn't want to say, uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you said, Tony. The, the one other point that I will mention is that I spoke to a lot of people there, some PR people we know, and I, and I saw Tara Bruno, who we both know, a lot of different PR people we know. Everybody said this is a lot more relaxed event compared to E3, yeah. where it's very stressful. And, and they are 100% correct about that. Obviously, if you're covering the event, though, I mean, you have a lot of embargoes. There was a lot of situations where... I will be playing a game and I'll be told, oh, yeah, this embargo ends on Monday, you know, or so on and yeah. so forth. So that situation stuff is still there. But overall, it is definitely a lot less stressful than E3. You don't have to worry about a crowded convention center. Uh, you're able to make appointments a as you would at E3. And then it's just a lot more chill, relaxed environment. So, uh, yeah. And, and Jeff Keighley already announced, uh, yeah, they are doing it again next year. They just don't have the dates yet. But they did say 2024 it's coming back. Yeah. So. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to ask you because you know some of the other people I talked to felt that the the place where Jeff Keighley had the event was like it was too small for what it had, but at the same time they also felt like you can't have it at the convention center because it would be too big. So, what's your take on that? Uh, I think that they are correct. It, it is too small. I mean, they made it work this year because they, like I said, they had a map system where they laid everything out so you knew exactly where each appointment was going to be at. Like Warner Brothers would have their own section, so on and so forth. But it definitely, it, you know, my personal opinion, and I hope nobody gets offended when I say this. Uh, I'm offended. Los Angeles. How dare downtown, you? Okay, okay, all right. No, no. Downtown Los Angeles, I have to say this. Uh, I'm going to apologize, Tony, because it might be a swear. Uh-oh. The place is a shithole, okay? <laughs> when I... Because 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 the thing is, my, where my hotel is at, that's great, right? But where the actual venue is at, the street right next to that venue as you're walking towards the place. Now, I, I saw this when I went to get my badge the first day, and I didn't go back down it after that. But the street right next to it is like a little mini skid row because you see nothing but tents, people out there, you know. And, and yeah, it's, it is very, it's very sad to see that stuff. But I also think, you know, I, I kind of feel like there has to be a better place that he could have that show in Los Angeles. Uh, yes, the convention center is probably too big. All right. So that we, we can agree on that. But there has to be some other venue he can have, some area he can have to put this stuff at. But yeah. overall. No, I, uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. But I mean, overall, that, that was the only criticism I had of where it's actually at. I mean, it is in walkable distance to where my hotel was at. So I, I pretty much did that on a consistent basis. I didn't take no Ubers. Only time I took an Uber was when I was going to the airport. But it, everything was in close proximity. So I liked the location of where I was at as far as the hotel is concerned. But yeah, where the venue was at, the area around there, it, it's, you know, and there's a lot of shops and stuff. Just like if you go in New York, you have all those different shops on the street. People are selling different merchandise and stuff like that. That's over there. That was fine. But that one street, that had all them tents. Yeah, man. that was just a very, uh, a very glaring thing to, to see. It's a little disturbing. Yeah, not not um, to derail the conversation, but yeah, that when you see that shit in real life, man, it's crazy. I remember the first time I saw that. Um, it was you know during one one of um, it was an E three. Um, we went to dinner with one of Manny's uh, artist friends who lived in L.A. You know, and we just walked to the place, and you just saw this fucking block filled with like these homeless like tents. You know, bums everywhere, shit everywhere fucking disgusting man and i already had a negative uh, view of la i do not you know i rich i'll be very blunt about it la does indeed <laughs> fucking suck it's horrible and i'm saying this as a new yorker that place is filthy 
you know? Yes. It's this, you, yes. Feel, you feel that shit in your fucking skin at the end of the day like oh. that. Yeah, I remember the one, the one year, the first year we went there with, with with Chris. Chris like, oh shit, look at look at this, uh, look at the morning haze. I'm like, yeah, that that's that that's not natural. That's the fucking fog, <laughs> bro. Like, it's, <laughs> this, yeah, it's, that's not mist, it's, you know. It's it's the homeless's mecca. Like yeah, that's is, where yeah. they go, and then yeah. they've done it. They've done the stories, and they've talked to these people that are there, and they've come from all over the United States, and it makes sense. They go up there because it's warm. They don't have to worry about snow and and freezing under a bridge or anything. But where do you go once you're there? Yeah, bro, they don't even go out there. They get put on buses from other states. Well, so, the, yeah, now, I yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I remember uh, the last E3 I went to. Me and Manny, we we were in a very shady spot in fucking LA, right? So, but we were taking the, the train in, right? The train had no bums in it at all. The opposite of New York. Why would you be yep. underground when you could just be up top where it's nice? You know, um, wow. a, a LA train system way fucking cleaner than New York. I'll give them that. I'll give you that, LA. It's a lot cleaner, and every station has <laughs> elevators. Shout out to you for that, but it's a it's a shit show, man. I hate that fucking city. I remember the first time I went there, I, I I had a horrible fucking time in that city, you know. And I was like, "Yo, am I one of these cats that just hates other cities other than New York?" Nope. Went to Boston. That shit was dope. Anaheim was dope. Seattle was fucking dope. No, it's just L.A. L.A. sucks. What a horrible fucking city that is. The, th the thing about L.A. <laughs> is it's, it's really like 10 cities in one. Yeah, it's everything's just, just spread out and shit. Like, what are we yeah. doing it, here, it, man? It, L.A. is a hubris to man or a monument to man's hubris. Like the fact that you guys are calling it a place, I'm somehow feeling is like being overly generous. Like <laughs> it, that that is the. the LA, I'm, I'm sorry for y'all that live out there, but like that place is fucking unnatural. It shouldn't exist. Everything, it's like it's like Las Vegas, right? Like everything about this screams, "What the fuck were you people thinking when you built it?" Because, but here's the thing: nobody was thinking. LA wasn't built. It just kind of fucking happened. Yeah, I, I think you said about a lot of those cities. But by the way, Brett. Las Vegas was fucking dope too. I like that place. L. A. No, Las one, Vegas yeah. is fucking dope. But yeah. you look around, you're like, this city shouldn't exist. Oh no, because it, it no, shouldn't. It's in the face. Like if there yeah. were a god, y'all be spitting in his face right now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, L. A. Terrible. That if if you know if you want to find hell on earth, or at least in America, go to L. A. Or San Francisco. Ooh, San Francisco after seven p. M. <laughs> you know, oh, 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 man. San Diego's nice though. San Diego's real nice. Yeah, go yeah, yeah go go yeah. to San Diego for nice, but L. A. San Francisco. San Diego, man. San Diego is one of my favorite cities. Man. It's <laughs> beautiful. Rich, you already know about San Francisco, and Manny, you do too. Yeah, you know that place yep. is fucked up. You know, You're rich. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Yo, Rich, I have a question. People think that New York yes, is sir. bad. No, just go, no. just go, go to California. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. anyway, go, go on, Rich uh, or Carlos. I, I guess you have a question. Yeah, Carlos. Rich. Yeah. So, Richard, so I know you enjoyed uh, your time there, uh, but would you say you know, it, like whatever, whatever happened this year, and let's just say they repeat it, would it be worth it to keep going every year? just for the same experience or do you feel like this is something that's oh like they're building upon this so this is you know this is the the rising within the ashes of e3 and it's going to get better each year and stuff like that what's your feelings oh on no that? i it, it, yes they're definitely building upon this because compared to last year they put a lot more effort like they did listen to the feedback from last year so they put a lot more effort into making it very clear where everything was at they made sure that uh, they had everything that you could need, whereas once you got into the event, you didn't necessarily need to leave until it was over. So I have to give them credit uh, in, on that. But I kind of feel like, yeah, they will have to continue to build upon this uh, from here on out. It, it's, I don't think it's going to be entirely the same next year, It really, but, but it really depends on them having to change the venue because at some point, like I said, there was a lot of people in there. And, and depending on when you got there, like if I got there early in the morning, it wasn't as crowded. But definitely as towards the end of the day of each day, when everybody is done with their demos and they're just walking around talking with each other, it's just it's too many people in a small space. So uh, hopefully they are going to eventually find another venue. But I can definitely see the potential of this being something that replaces E3. 
if E three if E three actually comes back next year, because uh, I I understand that Carlos, you you actually want E three to return uh, next year. So <laughs> <laughs> no, the, you've been you've been reading around the wrong streets, man. Probably that skid row place. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I just find it interesting, like how how the experiences, and we appreciate Rich uh, going over yeah. all this because, like, I haven't I haven't heard that many stories of you know what it was like to be there, so it was pretty interesting. Yeah, no, that's good it stuff, is, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 definitely not. It doesn't have all the magic of E three. You know, you don't have you don't have all the presentations we used to had where we would go to the Sony conference. Yeah, Xbox was there. That was great. Uh, Ubisoft, yeah, I was there for that. That was great, but those were the only two conferences that I was there because I, I missed the Summer Games Fest uh, show on Thursday. So, but yeah, it just doesn't feel quite the same. But it doesn't feel bad. It's just a different, different type of feeling. Um, yeah, some some of us some of us uh, over here will will tell you that you didn't miss much. <laughs> No, but I mean, you went hands on with a bunch of games, so that's good. You know, you got to see yeah, some people that, you probably haven't seen in a while because I, of the fucking lockdowns. You know that 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 was the first thing. Yes, I mean, I've seen people that I haven't seen since before the pandemic because it was like it felt like it was one mm. of the first events that everybody was out there this time around. Felt a little bit more comfortable. Uh, they didn't have no mask on. Well, there was some people that had on masks, but for the most part, everybody was comfortable just going out there and being out there talking among, e among e uh, each other. So, yeah, that's yeah. Good. it was a good time. It de definitely an improvement over last year. There was a lot more to play compared to last year when they only had that major Street Fighter. That was their major game, but they had a lot more this year. So yeah. I have to give them credit for that. And, and I imagine if these games come out 2024, as expected, next year it's going to be even better. There, there's going to be a lot more shit to play. Oh, oh yes, yes. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, if like I said, I everything gets, yeah, well, everything well, gets. Well, 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 hey, uh, the the one, hey, listen, I, I do, I do want to say this though. Uh, Xbox, if you, if anyone from Xbox listens to this show, they damn sure need to have a presence at Summer Games Fest next year. I mean, I, I mean, it's ridiculous. A lot of third party games were there. Yes. That's fine, but I, I want to see Xbox have something at the show this time around. They had ID and Xbox stuff, but I'm talking like Forza. I would have been great if there was a Forza demo there because this game is coming out in October and it wasn't there. So, um, but hopefully that's something that they happen that does happen next year because as I said, I did see Phil Spencer talking with Jeff Keighley on multiple occasions while he was that's there. Really so uh, really hopefully that is what happens. Yeah, you know we'll we'll see. Can't wait to play that one with my racing wheel. What? Maybe they're, you know, maybe maybe they're hammer. Jeff and uh, Jeff and Philly are hammer out some details. You don't know. No, well, we don't know. Yeah. Jeff, Uncle That's Phil possible. might be gone by next week. Shit. No, no, he's fine. He's totally fine. Nah, he <laughs> Yo, Rich, when, hip hop. Uh, they showed a video with hip hop when he saw when he saw uh, uh, <laughs> Bill Spencer and and Jeff Keeley. What, what, did you see that in person? Uh, I did. I did see that. Um, well, no, 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 no. Yeah, I did. I did see that. And I did laugh at that. I, I saw hip hop was also in the montage that was in the extended Xbox showcase the other day. They had a quick uh, image of him with his excited face. So uh, I don't know how they get these shots, you know, because I didn't I don't see where the camera is at half the time. And, and, and they, they got those like triple thousand zooms. Man. They, but they're shooting across <laughs> from the room. Don't do anything weird. Yeah. <laughs> this will get on the. Well, you, you, man, they got, they got hip hop and, um, um, what's his face from the PlayStation? Remember when they were bowing and it's in, it's in the silk, the, the oh, sizzle yeah. video? Yeah, Re him and Reggie. Yeah, Reggie. Yeah, him yeah, and Reggie yeah. from that yeah. thing? Yeah, they got him. I don't remember any cameras facing at that, that direction, but somehow they got him. Somehow they got him. Yeah. <laughs> that was epic, man. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Yeah. All right, Richard. Thanks for telling us these stories, man. Um, so yeah, what we'll do now is we'll, we'll quickly go over what was announced at Ubisoft and Capcom. We're, but we're not going to take super long like we usually do with these breakdowns. I, let's keep it kind of pithy uh -oh. here, uh, and which obviously, yeah, you know, keep, you know, feel free to chime in. So I'm I'm going to just read this this off a game spot. So here we have uh, Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora. They announced that game, so I guess it's coming. Yep. Rich, were you able to see this game or anything about it over there? Uh, I did not get a chance to see this game. 
I, it just had a video of it in yeah. pretty much the same, the same trailer that they showed in the presentation. Okay. Uh, I will say that I'm glad to hear it's coming out in December, though, because I was curious when they was going to actually release this game, if it was coming out next year. Yeah, and apparently James Cameron came out and made an appearance. I didn't see Ubisoft yeah. forward, so I, I don't know. Yeah, he just he yeah, had yeah, a pre, yeah, he did. He had a pre, he had an edited pre-recorded video, you know. This time mm -hmm. he didn't regale us with the the world of Avatar. Yeah, you know, like he, he did 10 years ago, yeah. He kept, he kept it short and sweet this time around. Crazy. All right, uh X Defiant, a PVP shooter. Uh um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Rich, do you know anything about that? It, I, I'm going to make a prediction. Uh, that's going to be Adam's next game because uh, <laughs> Division Division is not... Uh, I don't know what's no, happening no, no, with Division no. it's 2. Done, it's so. done, it's done. Oh, damn, Adam saying that again. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, this was like done. the worst... All, they said it was done. <laughs> Just for the fact they didn't mention... They didn't even mention the fucking Heartland, which is coming out in like two months. And they didn't show shit off of that. Forget about the mobile game. That's in development limbo also. So it's it's fucked up. And for them to even say, oh, a few months ago that one of the pillars is the division for the Ubisoft as a whole. And, and that's straight up bullshit. Because they're not even working on another one. You got your massive team doing Star Wars Outlaw bullshit. No one cares. I don't Damn, care. man. So yeah, we'll <laughs> see about this X Defiant game. They failed you, Adam. Failed you. They all failed they me. Failed everyone. Everyone. They failed everybody. Fucking yeah. failed. There's a, there's Yo, a bait. Yeah, where's Skull and Bones? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think they, I think they, they dug that back up again. What are you, what are you talking about? They had, a, they had a, a band playing Skull and Bones. That's it. <laughs> wow. That's, that's it. There you go. They played it's the just... song Skull and Bones. You, you didn't know yeah, it was yeah. just a song? Oh yeah, <laughs> with 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 no release date, but but there, there is a beta coming. <laughs> yeah, there's a beta. Yeah, but there is a beta coming. Yeah, yeah. There's also a beta for uh, X Defiant on uh, June 21st. So nobody wants this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, and hey, hey, you, Rich, you already told us about Lost Crown. It's dope. Let's get that. Yeah, that's dope. Oh, what is this? Oh, is this a mobile game? The Division Resurgence. Yep, yep. That's that is the a mobile, mobile one. Oh that's no, we, we don't, we don't, we don't. We don't oh, wow. Yeah, no, fuck that. Uh, yeah, Skull and Bones. Here you go. Wow, Skull and Bones is still far off. And that was we and played that, this and game that... in 2017, man. How yeah, yeah, you know, far off at this point? Yeah, yeah I, I, I do. I do. I remember that, and I remember that Gary actually wrote a preview for that game as well. So, so did I. That's... Yeah, yeah, I yeah. wrote a preview for that <laughs> shit. You know, it's fucking crazy. Uh, the Crew Motor Fest. They bring the crew back. Where's Where's Brian? That was his game. It's the crew. It's but it's the greatest game ever. Ever. Uh, it's the third entry in the game. All right, so there you go. Um, what the fuck is this? Captain Laserhawk, a Blood Dragon remix. None that all. It's an anime. It's the an anime. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anime, so, yeah. Manny, like it, anime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they had that uh, Artie Shankar show up on there. He didn't have his crow makeup on this time around. Um, and he just, yeah, he, he, you know, he did the, what was it? The, um, he was an executive producer on edge runners and I think he's, he's you know, part of the Castlevania thing. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Anime. Um, yeah. Anime. Yeah. Quote, hard quotes right there. Anime, you know? Um, Assassin's Creed the, Nexus, we've heard... Oh, go ahead, go, go ahead, Adam. Go ahead. I, I was just thinking, it was like, from that whole thing, because, you know, I was traveling, but then a tweet popped up on my phone, and there's only a few people that I follow, and this is from one Cliffy B, and he was like, where's Gear 6? And he's right. Well, they didn't show shit. Nothing. They, remember they, I, remember well, I said this yeah, well, during the show? Adam's gonna be pissed. Yep, we saw. Oh. We, yep, we said that. We, we, we uh, predicted yeah, it. Yeah, we were like, if Adam was well, here, well, he'd be asking well, let me, six. Well, well, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to change the subject, but I just want to say a quick comment uh, related to that. Uh, I'm pretty sure you heard Adam that people can fly is are now working on another project for Microsoft. Now that better not be Gear Six, you know, because Co Coalition no. is supposed to be working on Gear Six. Yeah, so no, I don't know I, what I, that is. Right, it's but, uh, if they're, unless they're helping them with some stuff, but no, I I don't see because it, it they they're all liars. 
They're all <laughs> liars. Because remember, they showed off when they were showing the new Unreal Engine. And they were like, oh, look, they showed off Marcus Phoenix and the new lighting system. We're doing this on a new engine. And we're, so it's going to take a little longer. But this is what's going on. This is what we're doing. We're working closely with them with this engine. And that was a coalition. So I don't I don't see them just scrapping. And then of course, was it you that said that whole thing about the story that the dude that left said he wrote a story and he's not sure if they used it or not? Yeah, Rod, Rod said, Ferguson yeah. said he Ron said Ferguson that, in said that in he his interview. Yeah. That he wrote yeah, that he did the story and he doesn't know. And it's like, see, that's more lies than either he's lying <laughs> in the studio because in that when they showed off that they're like, Oh yeah, we're done. But when we saw all the things this new engine could do, we're like, hmm. Can we port this over? Well, we're going to need help. And Epic said that they would help us. So this is going to mean that we need more development time for porting this over. But until then, take a look at this. And they showed us all the stuff for marketing. Straight up lies. All of them are lying. Well, the one, thing I, one thing I will say is if Rod Ferguson did write a story for Six, they probably should use that because it was his idea to kill off one of those characters in five. Uh -oh. So he probably had an idea of where it should have, what should happen next. So I hope they're going to at least use that as a reference if they're not going to use it. Out well, that was the whole reason why he was brought back when they started everything. Cause they wanted somebody who was familiar with the story, the franchise, yep. and then just to keep going with it. And he was there. He, he did three games, you know, I guess two, if you don't get the other one, but. He put in his time. He did what he had to do. I mean, if anything, they should grab the the people that are writing the books. There was two of them that I, I checked out. They were pretty good a few years ago, but really good stories. Bring those people in. Yeah. All right. Um, Assassin's Creed Nexus. That's the big metaverse or whatever of the Assassin's Creed uh, games. VR. Oh, it's VR. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um. All right. <laughs> Mirage. I guess that's coming out this year. Yeah, that's October. Cool. Yeah, October. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. That shit looks so old. When, when I saw that trailer, <laughs> I'm like, "Am I watching? Is this Assassin's Creed Three? What the fuck?" It's so, it this? looks like a PlayStation, like a PlayStation yeah. Three game I'm almost. Like, I've been there, done that. This, this come on now. Yeah, um, Assassin's Creed Jade. Um, that's another one. That's that's the mobile out. game. That's, that's the, the mobile, mobile game. Yeah, we, don't, we don't care about that. Yeah, that's yeah. It. <laughs> um, and, and then the big one here, uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Rich, can you tell us anything? About this, did you see anything else that we haven't seen? Oh, no, I didn't see. They didn't have anything else ready to show. Just the video that they showed in that presentation. And uh, that it, I, 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 I do want to say this, though, because that obviously was Ubisoft's, okay, we got one more thing to show. But I kind of feel like the fact that it was announced at the Xbox showcase the day before, that kind of like, because I, I thought Ubisoft was going to have something else they were going to announce at their show. So I was a little disappointed that uh, they didn't have anything else. And I told you, I told you because yeah. they didn't announce it. That's the worst kept secret. Everybody knew about <laughs> this shit. They just didn't officially announce it. And I said, watch it be that lame shit. Watch it be that, oh, yeah, the, surprise. It's a game that everybody else told you we were doing. But now we're going to tell you we're doing it. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, um, I, I'm interested to see where that game goes. Um, to the bargain bin. Damn. <laughs> I'm so mad. This was the worst. Like I was on my trip and I'm seeing these alerts on my phone. I felt like throwing my shit out the window. I was like, this is some garbage. All this shit was garbage. <laughs> what a letdown. Yeah, speaking about letdowns, let's talk about the Capcom showcase. <laughs> whoa, whoa. I heard yeah, well, people, people were not happy. Final fight. One. Yeah, where's the final fight, Tony? Right? That was what we were hearing. This final fight. Nah, we, that shit one. wasn't coming. That was You coming. see, look at that. Yeah. All right. So again, just uh, quick. Let's oh, go ahead, Chris. I'm just gonna say that that showcase was a complete waste of time. Oh shit! I, I, in the middle of it, when they um, as I, I was uh, I was I was working from home and they uh they brought they showed Ghost Trick and I'm like, am I smoking crack right now? I went out to my <laughs> DS shelf and I pulled it off the. He said 30 years. I'm like, what are you talking about? I pulled it off the shelf. And I'm looking at it. Like, it's the same fucking game. I showed it to Chris. So I'm like, you mean this game? Wow. I mean, we already have this game. <laughs> it wasted time on that. I was like, oh, this is going to suck then. We're wasting time with like ghost. Does that trick. game have a following? Is, is there like a dialogue? You know, I, I, I forgot it language. existed. I literally went back on my game shelf. And I'm like, wait, we own this. Yeah, came Played out in this back in like 20 yeah. yeah, way back then. That's crazy. 
All right, we'll get to that in a little bit. So, uh, what am I? I don't know where I'm reading this from. Anyways, here are some games. Um, cool. Path of the Goddess. I'm just gonna say that. I don't know what the fuck that is. That was that? also a waste of time because that was yeah. at Xbox Showcase. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, they showed this shit like, again. Yeah, that's stupid. That's that is a waste of time. Um, Mega Man X Dive Offline. What the fuck is this? It's a mobile. It's a oh, port. Okay. Yeah, 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 isn't that the yeah. port? That was some mobile shit. They, that's not coming to console. It's coming to mobile and PC. That's it. Yeah, uh oh. Um. All right. Street Fighter Six. We already know. Um, but a game. Nice. But a but a game. Absolutely. Okay. VR mode. Resident Evil Four. Why do they already announce this? Who cares? No. They, you need they to, show you the need same to, footage. Yeah. Wow. You need to do it more. It's more now. Yeah. Oh, no, they waste. They yeah. wasted time telling people to get a Capcom ID. That's stupid. I mean, how is that? How was this a uh, uh, showcase? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah, uh, and then yeah. what was it? The what was the the, the space one? Which one? Pragmata. Oh, Pragmata. The That's the nice second here. apology. That's what they the should call it. Yeah, they rename that game the second apology. It's literally a CG trailer, and then in it, the girl is writing up an apology. Wow. It, it so it has oh, this year crossed out, and it just has a question mark. So not even like pushing it to next year, pushing it to we don't know when it's gonna. So is it going into the same? Is it going into the same dimension as Deep Down? Yes. Yeah, it fell in there. That was her apology. Yeah, oh, she's sitting man. next to that knight in the in the cave. Jesus. <laughs> um, and Chris, like you said, Ghost Trick. <laughs> oh, yeah, and why did they spend so much time on on like Ghost Trick? Yo, know, it's a neat game, but I was like. It, this already exists and he acted like oh we haven't done this in 30 years i'm like no you did this in 2010 it was on the ds it's the same freaking game and you're yeah. just porting the mobile one yeah that's insane all right um apollo justice ace attorney another port yeah it's three ace yeah, attorney yeah. games in one <laughs> Yay. another port yeah um <laughs> the exo primal why are they hyping this fucking game Oh, somebody there. Oh yeah, that it, that's out. That's out next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they're hyping the game because it's coming out soon. Yeah. Um, Dragon's Dogma Two. Did they show anything new that they didn't show at the Xbox showcase? It looked like the same trailer to me. It looked, it looked the same. This Damn. really is a waste of time, man. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and and all everybody was hanging on for was like. You're gonna show Resident Evil Four DLC, right? No, you, no. That was not I, VR instead. I thought that because of the success they've had doing these remakes and all the stuff, that they were gonna do that with some of the other ones, like bring another Lost Planet or just redo Lost Planet One, which is great to fix that one up or fix up Dead Rising One. Or, you know, or, or, and, or any or of that would have been an actual news. <laughs> Or Port yeah. EX Troopers, the actual Lost Planet that that's actually good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no, we, we didn't we didn't get any of that. We didn't get know. anything. We didn't get DLC news. We didn't get Monster Hunter news. We didn't get nothing. Damn, it's bullshit. Yeah, literally, it. I, I finished reading the list. Wow, that sounds horrible. Fuck that. All right, um, we'll move on here. A couple little bits. <laughs> I found this hilarious. So Xbox, Microsoft, whatever, they said that Starfield has the fewest bugs of any Bethesda game ever. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, oh they got to go with the joke because that's always been the joke, right? That it's yeah. they're fun games, but they're buggy as hell. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Brett, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> Yeah. I, I I'm 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 trying to want to like I want to meet the person who's like thinking this game is going to come out completely bug free, but like I'm not saying it's coming out like cyberpunk style, but like <laughs> who's the person who'd be like, oh Microsoft bought him, now's our chance for an entirely bug free Bethesda game. Some people have right. literally said that they're like, oh they better fix all the bugs now. Right as you're running your Windows update, you're saying that. You're yeah, yeah, right. Bro, bro, what is it like to live in that world? <laughs> oh my god! Amazing. It would be funny if it had the fewest bugs, but they're like game breaking. Like they're yeah. like the largest bugs ever seen in a in a game. 
<laughs> well, that's why I'm like, I'm like, all right, to so the people who are buying a deluxe edition to like get in five days, are like, don't get me wrong, I did that with Diablo, a very social game, right? But the the people who are like, man, I can't wait to get into this Bethesda game five days early. I'm like, are you really sure about that? Because that feels like a monkey's paw wish. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I really wish you could play this without the day one patch. That's wild. All right, so there's that. Um, so Phil Spencer said that he doesn't believe there will be a mid-gen refresh for the Xbox, which I think is good. I don't think the PlayStation needs one either. I don't think we need them this generation, to be and honest. They, well, Sony's they, doing they, it, right? Sony is apparently doing it. That's a rumor, yeah. say. There's a rumor, and they need to make it smaller. That's what they need to do. Okay. <laughs> Bro, we just need to make this a short generation. Let's be honest. Yeah. Cut the cord, right? <laughs> cut look, the cord. Look, chip, cut, chip the, cut the cord. <laughs> Dude, chip yeah, architecture is 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 changing, and I don't want to say it's like completely refounded itself, but like we're making huge. We made huge leaps in in the last few years, and we're kind of set to make more huge leaps in the next few years. So. I just feel like this particular generation was both off to a slow start and it's aging incredibly quickly. Yeah. So what do you, what do you suggest they do then? I mean, I, this doesn't need to be a 10 year life cycle. Like I kind of feel like, um, because like you and I, Tony have talked about like how, how Apple is like trying some different ways of making boards and, and, they're finding ways to do more with less. Um, so I think this should be a seven year generation, not a 10 year generation. I yeah, think okay. that, I that's, think that that's honestly, the interesting thing, like the, 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 here's the thing. Officially the last two generations have been seven years. Right. But the thing is, the consoles haven't stopped being manufactured at the seven year mark. So they actually have been 10 years. You're right about that. Um, but so if this kind of generation is going to be seven years, it really means five years then. Yeah. 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 yeah like instead means of it needs a, to be it, over next two weeks, like next bro, year will be the last of, one. Instead then. Of, what, like what? Here's the thing though. Like, why would I buy a mid gen refresh? Like, it, like, and I understand everybody's like, Oh, the console, the generation has to last so long, but like, they're lasting so long that you're already con assuming you're buying two consoles in the span like in the span of, of of one console's lifetime, right? Like instead of a mid gen refresh, how about just shorter gens, right? Yeah, good. I would go back to five years, but the problem is this generation. It's just but, now getting started. Yeah, nothing's well, pushing know. these consoles, so there's really no need. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, that's that's uh, a bit of a, a catch-22 because, like, the only reason things aren't pushing the consoles is because the po consoles are such a large portion of the market share that most games are developed for them. There's plenty of stuff already that you, you can't really do on consoles. I mean, I'm pretty sure Starfield is, is by itself just pushing the limits. You know, that's why it can't be... 60 fps that's why it has to be on we'll pc see how the, to do that we'll see how the modders so I keep telling man like i keep telling console guys like don't expect uh don't expect pc performance from a 500 dollars console don't you know yeah but but then, mean, but, but then again let's just be honest here right when, when it comes to xbox specifically <clears throat> we had a certain somebody going that the xbox series x eats monsters okay bro you know okay out of here with I mean, it, 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 well, it's kind of like the Steam Deck. Like, when you say something is powerful, like, let's fucking put that shit in context. Because, you know, at one point, sure, they were pretty decently, decently comparable. But I feel like the gulf between consoles and PCs is just, it's gotten so huge. And then before all you PC guys start patting yourself on the back, that's because you're spending five times as fucking much on a PC as you did, I guess, back in my day. I don't know, like, like used used to be, you didn't have to spend four grand to get a powerhouse PC. So you could four you could, grand that could be just a video card now, dude. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I used to be able to buy build an entire PC setup for like twelve hundred bucks that would just smoke any console. 
for years and years to come, right? But like now it's come down to the price of a small car. And as much as I'd love to be able to do that, bro, I cannot afford that shit. Maybe it's just that I don't have the superfluous income. Maybe it's just that I don't care that much to invest that much into my hobby. Like, I feel like I already spent a lot of money on my hobby, man. But, like, I don't have that PC. So, I mean, I I, I don't know. They, there's a huge difference between them, but also there's a huge price difference between them. That being said, like I said, I, I already feel like we need to probably just move on from this generation. Don't, don't refresh it. Don't try and, like kickstart it don't try and like just because you're already tied to your last generation you've already made the fucking commitment especially you microsoft that you're you know this this thing is going to be in with that 300 hundred dollar piece of shit and you you you've chained yourself to that thing just fucking move on and like i i hear it like my it, here's the part where i'm torn like as a as a gamer even almost my immediate major reaction is be like, fuck you, you haven't even given me the old console yet. But then the other, the logical part of my brain overrides and be like, not that you would necessarily buy a, a, a mid-gen refresh. What's the point of even selling one? Right, like, like uh, oh, here's a, a, a system that is better, but still going to play the same games as that worse system. Like, what the fuck is the point, man? I bet that that's, that's literally my has. argument for this console generation. So, yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's my that's, argument that's, against so, cross gen games. That's, that's why, yeah. and that's that's my point. That's why you need to make this a shorter generation. There's like, cool, the generation of inclusivity went like a fucking fart in the wind. How about we just make something so powerful and try and make exclusive games for it, make it so awesome that people just want to come to that party? And I realize, like, that's kind of a resets the way that things used to be uh but it, i don't want another xbox that's three times as powerful as the base model that plays the same fucking game and if you're I, trying to already give me the idea there's so many on the idea of buying another console why the fuck would it be the same one i'm curious about the series x the the black one they said oh it's got the the one terabyte ssd yeah. so, I, was like, I bet you it has more ram inside I don't there think so. Man. There we go. go. One hour. One I'll, hour and twenty three minutes. Have something. I'll, no, no, no. And I'll tell you what, because they've done this before. They did this with the three hundred and sixty, and they did this with the Xbox One when they we when they did uh, the S version, and then next you know that one was able to produce four K, true four K, and, and so they've always done little bumps, but they don't really point any attention to it because like oh it's not that big of a deal, not that big of a deal. It's just it just looks cool. It, that's all. It's a little different. Bullshit. I bet you once people get hands on it and they tear it down, they're going to be like, holy shit, this does have more memory. This runs better than the other one. And this is to phase out that white one, which is having all these problems. It can't even run Boulder's Gate. And I, I, mean, and yeah. I feel like that's what this is for. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 and I just, am I the only, like, I don't know if I'm the only one that was like, look, man, if somebody came out tomorrow, or not tomorrow, in, in say two years from now, right? They came out two years from now and they said, hey, we're done with this parody shit. We're leaving the old generation behind. We're making a next gen console that is only going to play next gen console games. And here's a solid lineup of four to five games that are going to be launching on this. I don't care who makes the fucking system. That's my primary console. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get that anymore. You know, I. Because even when I got my PS5, it just felt like I just upgraded my PS4. Because there haven't been exclusive games. Yeah, that's and, like problem. that's the thing. We we can have backwards compatibility, but this forward compatibility shit it's it's got to go. I agree. Right, like I've been you, you, I've been saying that since before this generation even started. You know. Yeah, I know, and a lot of us have. I just I think Microsoft might be able to get away with it by bridging that gap with streaming, <laughs> but we need to <laughs> move on. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I, I I agree with that. Go ahead, Carlos. Go ahead. I mean, y'all know, y'all know my thoughts. I've been, I've been the the, the preacher man's preacher man on, on this shit. Where it's like, oh, well, you know, you know what's so cool about the Xbox Ooh. Series S and Series X is it's gonna be, you know, the games that are coming out for that are also gonna come out on the Xbox One. And people are like, yes, Queen, yes, Queen. 
like all that bullshit. Yeah. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? That's it's not like PC, good news. You just upscale it. You just flick a button. It's the same thing. It'll be okay. Scale it up. You're not just gonna scale it up. You're not gonna hold game development back. It's okay. You know. Meanwhile, look what's happened. You know, we've been telling you this shit for three fucking years. You know, and and it's happening now. Motherfuckers don't listen, man. I swear. Meanwhile, games are definitely still yeah. bottlenecked to the processing PowerPoint. I guess I, I want to share that. Like, you know, the reason there's a build limit on your settlements and Fallout, it's because that's what your fucking console can handle. It's because the processing power on consoles still is underpowered, and it does it does affect like everybody thinks. Oh, it doesn't affect gameplay, right? It, but it does. It, it affects the, not just the gameplay, but the kind of games that you have. We can only have a certain size Minecraft world on consoles because of that bottleneck. Like, it's a real thing. And I don't, I think people don't think about that. They don't. Like, we, again, they expect a $500 console to perform as well as a $3,000 PC. That makes no fucking sense. But it, it, it's, I don't it's, know. it's just, it's just that the, the, the skeleton is based off of the old hardware. It's like if you if you build if you base a skeleton of a fucking of a saber tooth on a fucking cat, it's not gonna work. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, like it's it's that's just how it is. The, there's a there's a, a reference point of the lowest common denominator, and they build upon that, and then they can scale up the 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 graphics up, so they can get 4K or or 2K or 60 frames per second or 20 frames per second, but. If, if if that's doing it from the bottom up, well, when but when you only have one console, you get to explore <clears throat> everything. The rubric is changed, and 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 that and the medium in which you start designing your game is completely different. So you don't have to do these. Oh, you know, let's 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 develop God of War Ragnarok so you can go through all these crevices all every fucking every fucking second. Or we or this in between world, so you can it can work as a loading screen. When in reality, the PS5 doesn't need any of that, but it's there because it's the the old game had the old uh, the old console needs it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. This generation's been so fucking whack, man. Disappointing. I'm f- glad we're finally getting games, but look how long it took. You know, fucking bullshit. Um, I mean, even that, like, I, we're starting to get games. Yeah, we like, are. Yeah, but it's like, look how long it took. You know, bro, I'm I'm gonna make some people unhappy and, and say like, <clears throat> we got games. I don't think the, I don't think a, a shitload of them are Sony. Like, I, I think there's a lot of third party games coming out. There's a few things that are coming from Microsoft, but like. I feel I'm afraid we're fe- we're heading into a Sony drought. I think that they bet the farm on live service games, and there's not that much in the pipeline right now, and that's it's not a good feeling, man. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good point. It's like after Spider Man, what's coming out? Wolverine. Well, and then, well yeah, that, Wolverine, and that's, that's the whole. That's, that's one. The- that's one. Yo, we got Wolverine coming. But that, um, but that's yeah. the thing. It's like we the 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 year is halfway done. And yeah. Spider Man is the only thing that we have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Was it Gran Tur- was Gran Turismo this year? Gran Turismo but, is that coming or is that fucking uh, movie coming? You know, well, I don't know. Well, yeah, well, hold I, on. I, yeah, hold on. I, I have that, to stop you there, Carlos. Yeah, Gr- Gran Turismo is the most anticipated Sony exclusive movie coming out this year. Right? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Did you watch that trailer? Did you like yeah, really we see, were the to see that? <laughs> we were forced yeah. to see that shit during the PlayStation Showcase, man. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, but I want a lot of people seem to have not paid attention. They're like, "What is this about? Why would they even bother showing?" It's like he is the gamer. It's they're taking a gamer who plays Gran Turismo and putting him in a real car in a real it's race. It's a waste of time. It's not. It's not like I rather watch speed. Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, but this is, this is what I'm. But this is what I'm saying. Is is it who is going to watch this? Clearly, they think there's a market, and they, they they go through their numbers. A lot of people do buy Gran Turismo, so they're like, if these much this amount of people care this much about the game, they will care to see this movie. I don't think they understand what makes people care about the game. They don't. It's just like, hey, people like Gran Turismo. Slap that on a movie, you know? It's it's, it's kind of like. And like, yeah, I agree that there's a lot of marketing and money that goes into this, but also at the same time, there's like 
some people were like, you know what people really want to see in a Halo show? Master Chief take his mask off. Like, what? You guys really just have no idea. You fucking idiots. Um, all right. Let's move on here. Okay. The, the, the story that never ends, man. Um, the Microsoft Activision <clears throat> drama bullshit. Um, Adam, what's going on with this now, man? This is it. It's coming. It's coming to an end. <laughs> is, the it really, is it really? Yeah, coming no, to this end? is it. So what happened recently is that there was a leak. I throw the quotes up there that going around that Microsoft was going to close the deal on Friday tomorrow. Right. And that came out. I want to say last Friday or even Saturday. I remember seeing some messages and people say, hey, this is it. They're going to close. They're going to close. It's like, ah, oh, well, we'll see what happens. Well, the FTC believed it. And so then they filed for an injunction with a judge saying, hey, no, we got to stop them. They're going to try to close this deal. And we didn't even do our court case and all this stuff. And so they got their case bumped up to get heard in front of a judge. And that is going to happen on the 20th. So then by the 26th, then we'll get the ruling. But the 20th is when everything goes through. And a lot of people feel that this was done intentionally because FTC has been dragging this out. The whole reason why this is being dragged is because, remember, they just didn't want to hear Microsoft. They're like, no, no, we, we're, we're saying no to this deal. Not happening. And there was no court date. And it was getting pushed. And it was pushed. Well, once they heard this, all oh, they're going to try to close now without us going to court. Then they, they get rushed. So now... It's actually going to go to court in front of a judge next week. So this is great. This is what Microsoft wants because they can then present their argument because the argument is that FTC has is still that Microsoft is going to keep everything tied to the Xbox platform. That is the court documents because that's why they they flat out said no. It, they haven't heard what we already and outside of the bubble know about the ten years with Nintendo, ten years here, blah 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 blah. They, that's none of that's been it's in the documents. None of that has been heard in a court. So as soon as they get to Microsoft actually get to present all this information, all this proof that this is their real goal is just to make a lot of money, put on every platform available. Everyone and the legal experts are like, this is it. It's it's. It, how can you argue when this is not a front runner? If it's, it would be different if it was a front runner. It's not. They're in third place in this market. And even if this deal goes through, they will still be in third place. They all have some good IPs, you know, Call of Duty Diablo, but it's not going to propel them past Sony. It's just it's not going to happen. So uh, with all that, this great. So the whole point is now everything gets pushed up faster as opposed to there was really no date. Maybe it was August or whatever. FTC was dragging their feet with it. But as soon as they heard that Microsoft wants to close, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. We can't have this. And they filed that emergency injunction with the judge. And then the judge was like, all right, fine, fine. All right, we'll do this. But you got to have all your shit ready for next week. That's it. So then we'll find out by the end of this month if they get the deal or not. If they don't, I think this will be it. I think uh, we'll see within a year, Microsoft puts it up for sale. Maybe Amazon or Apple buys uh, the Xbox brand, and then they call it quits. They're like, hey, we tried. Because then that means there's no growth. If you can't, uh, and then this is how it works everywhere. We see with Disney. Disney bought parts of Fox and other ESPN. If you can't gobble up others to get bigger, to build your pyramid, then it's not going to happen. And if they uh, threw all this money that over to get Activision, one of the biggest ones, that you can get out there. And they're being said, no, you can't do it. I was like, all right, then fuck it. What's, what's the point? There, there's no point then. There, that's that's it. They have to always settle for third place and probably even less if you throw in the PC world. And now with handhelds, with the the, the ally and Steve Deck and stuff, it, it's turning more into its own console space right there. So it, it, no one's going to give a shit. So we'll, this is it. This is it. I this hope month, you're right. I hope you're right. We'll be Thank done. You. Yeah, because there, there's no way if if the judge just straight up says no, they can't appeal. That's it. They just can't do it. They'll would have to work out some other deal. Maybe that's when they talk to activists. Like, all right, are you willing to sell off parts, you know, and sell off certain IPs? I don't know if that'll be a thing they want to do, but uh, that's the only other alternative. If the judge says no, but if he says yes, that's it. It's over. They, then they can buy it and they can do whatever they want. Then we could stop talking about this shit. But either you way, know, this is it. It's the end of the month. It's done. The 20th to the 26th. That's it. We're good. Hey, Barry Burns says FTC got the nuke. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. man. 
Yeah, I don't really have any more to say on this. I just want it to be over. One way or another, I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if Microsoft wins or loses. I don't care. I just want this over. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, the funny thing is to see uh, on C SPAN and stuff with Congress getting involved in this. I'm like, how dare these Japanese companies tell two American companies they can't merge? How dare they? We can't do that. We can't do that. Why don't we investigate them? So. Yeah. Oh, and that's it. Yeah. But hold on. This is interesting. GZDR says if they don't close the deal by July 8th, they owe Activision $3 billion. How so? No, no, no. It's because they have a, a close date, that, and that's the other thing that gets all bumped up. But if this happens by within June, which is next week, that they want to go in front of a judge, if it gets said yes or no, then they don't have to pay any of that. But there was a closing uh, cost if it goes surpassed the date. But there's there's a lot of stipulation stuff because it's like if one party was dragging their feet. But this is not. It's not that case. It's not an issue of of uh, Microsoft dragging their feet of getting all the paperwork done and making the transition as fast as possible. It's not their fault. This is FTC and, and CMA colluding to, to make sure this deal doesn't happen. You know, because that was the other thing when they judged before and it went to CMA and saying, you know, have you guys talked to CMA? And like, have you talked to the FTC about this? Like, oh, a little bit. What's a little bit? Oh, a few calls. How many calls? 74. 74. That's a little bit. I was like, all right, yeah, this, none of this shit makes sense. So it's a lot of shady shit going on. I can't wait to see the movie. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Whether <laughs> it happens or not, yeah. there's going to be a movie on this shit. Actually, and then this is why this is why I say, I, I think if this doesn't go through, then Uncle Phil leaves. He's like, you know what? There's no reason for him to stick around. He's made buckets of money. He can go do something else. And that's, oh, when that's an it, interesting theory. And uh, for what? Because then it, it hits him again as a failure. Forget about the games. Forget about the studios that can't produce. And now you can't even buy other studio. Now, now what? What what good are you? You know, and just like with every company and every business, when shit isn't looking great, what do you do? You get new management. So the, yeah. I could easily see this is when he says, you know what? I'm gonna take a step back. You know, we, we put a lot of effort into all these projects and blah, blah, blah. I have faith in whoever, you know, takes over my spot, throw in whoever you want, and then that's it. And then he's out. Because it's just, just going to look bad on the company. Oh, look, Phil fucked up again. He couldn't even get this deal done. Da, da, da. It sucks, but it is what it is. I don't think that's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen? I think he's just going to stay stay status quo if if they don't if the deal doesn't go through. Well, remember what Nadella said when he was asked about this. He says that the future, what's the future? This was like two weeks ago or maybe three weeks now when it was an interview about the whole thing. And he says, we'll see what happens. He's like, well, where do you see the future after this? He's like, well, what future? We, we, if it's all about growth. That's all it comes down to, right? Every business needs to grow. And they see this as a growth opportunity, not just for them, but for the gaming industry, getting all these games from other platforms, blah, 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 blah. And if that doesn't happen, then there is no growth. So then there's no market. There's no space for them there. So that, that says it all right there, that if this doesn't happen, they're just going to move in another direction. And that's when they're like, hey, we tried. Let's put this fucking whole shit up for sale. Who wants it? And they get everything in a box, literally the Xbox. Slap your logo on it, Amazon or Apple, you know, fucking whoever else. Wait, so you're, that's another extreme. So you're saying if, if this deal doesn't go through, tonight. Yeah, yeah. No, I, because the way they word it, the way the way Nadella put it, and the way in that interview, the looking up, yeah, and he's the the big yeah. boss of Microsoft, is that they put a lot into this. And think about this: was close to seventy billion dollars. This is a huge deal. And if this can't happen then they're being told there is no big growth for you. You will always either have to create your own studio or buy smaller ones, but you can't get the big boys. Forget about trying to get EA if they ever go for sale. Forget about trying to go with Ubisoft. But they got Bethesda. That proves they can yeah, get shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that at that point. And then even when that came out, our, our lady Khan over FTC said she would have blocked that shit. You know, it's like, why? What's the hate? I, there's definitely some some serious backstory that we'll <laughs> find out in the movie of why she hates Microsoft so much. Because this this is really about that. It's not about Xbox. It's about Microsoft. When the fact that they just even flat out reject it before even hearing anything out just proves it. So it, they didn't go after. They didn't say anything when when Disney went to buy Fox. I mean, um, uh, you know what the 
uh, 20th that, century 20th century fox yeah when and that's that was usually they didn't say anything when uh when amazon went and bought uh mgm it's uh, these are big deals that are going on and they didn't give a shit well, yeah, fuck it. go ahead buy buy whatever you want doesn't matter but then when this comes up and it's it's very odd that they would just jump on it. it's like no 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 then not this not this why why not this what's so special about it? so but it, it just from Nadella's approach and how they feel and everything, it, 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 it just pointed that if they can't grow and play like the big boys that they, they usually are when it comes to PC space, you know, they, they've bought the Skype and a bunch of other ones. Remember, whenever something big comes up, they, they buy it and that's it. That's always been their thing. Can and, I, can I, uh, can I project <laughs> a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I feel like, I feel like you more than anyone in this room has the most invested into this deal. That you feel like if it doesn't go through, that Phil failed you, and I feel that like that's failed. Failed. I, don't, I don't understand. I don't even. I don't. Where does that even come from? They failed me all when they said no Gear Six. I have nothing. That's not an Activision game. No, that's, well, that's it's like it's like uh, no. Like, that's the point. Like they failed you with Gears. They failed you with well, table tennis is not them, but they failed you in that other is, avenues. No. That Halo. <laughs> they, bought, they bought it from Rockstar. They they paid for that. Well, they paid they, for they, that. They failed. They failed you in a lot of avenues, and and the one shining thing that they could potentially do is save Call of Duty. That's and not me either. You said, you said you said, but you did say I, you I did say that anything. that Call of that that this Activision Microsoft deal is good for Call of Duty. It's good because for Call you don't of like Duty. the direction. It's, no, it's good for Call of Duty. Yeah, definitely. I don't like the direction, and it's great for them, and they can put on all platforms, and they can change the game. But it's not the the deciding factor for me. It's for them. The way sh- if if let's say Starfield was great and Halo was great, the Infinite and we had no issues, then wouldn't matter. Wouldn't matter. But on a business side, those shits have flopped. Well, I and mean, you know, Halo, Halo, Halo and Infinite it, was bad. Starfield was is thirty frames per second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what? And you can't rely on that shit. Not everybody's gonna go and buy Starfield. That's not an everybody game. That's not like a Grand Theft Auto game. What? It's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's not. The same group of people that buy uh, Grand Theft Auto are not the same ones that are gonna go buy Starfield. Bro, yeah, no, the people who buy this game are gonna be people who buy Skyrim and Fallout, which is like fucking everyone. Uh, yeah, no, it's not gonna pull it. It's not gonna pull it. It's not enough. It's not. It's not for all markets, and it's not gonna happen. I don't well, see. How it. is it possibly not I like? It. It, I don't see it. How is it possibly for less market than <laughs> Skyrim? It. It's not the less market. It's just that interest. It's that world. It's just not as accessible when it comes to like a Grand Theft Auto where you can jump into that online world and do some racing. Don't want to do some racing, do some heist. Don't want to do some heist. Just run around and just do dumb shit with your friends. To do that all in space, we're not getting that. Bro, we're not getting that open world experience. No, no. Okay, no. This isn't a live service game, but like, bro, like you, you, you do realize Skyrim, like the closest analog to this game is one of the most played games of all time and, and like is right up there with uh, GTA, right? Like, but you know it's, what it's, Skyrim is. They, Skyrim is nobody not a knew space what Skyrim game. is when Skyrim came it's out. It's not a More space game. It's a no, space game. Is what I'm saying. It's a genre. People like dragons. They like swords. They like running around doing all that shit. Space on this level, I think it's gonna be a hard sell. It's gonna so, be hard so sell. The, the difference is between fantasy and space. Like yes. people love fantasy, yeah. oh, yeah. but nobody loves space. No, not that no one loves it, but it's not on that level. I don't see it going to pulling any of that big money. That's just it. I just don't see it. Oh, by the way, real quick, I, I had I had to look up some numbers. Right? Yes, you're right that Skyrim didn't sell as much as Grand Theft Auto, but and this is from a day ago. Bethesda said this: the game in 12 60 years million. has sold 60 million copies. That is not niche, bro. That's all. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm saying. But I Adam said that space. Yeah, Adam said that it's not the same as Skyrim. Either. What is Fallout sold? Because oh, you want to talk about a niche, a niche setting that people may or may not get into, like post-apocalyptic think... retro futurism, more niche than space. Well, post-apocalyptic is, is pretty, pretty mainstream these days. Bro, like space yeah. is one of the most generic, basic settings. Like people love spaceship. All right, so Fallout so 3 and Halo. 4 um, have sold about 13 million each. 
Those are pretty okay. big numbers. So, uh, can I go ahead? Can I make a quick comment? Yeah. Uh, I believe Brett said on this show, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, where I, now you have to tell me if I'm incorrect, Brett, whether it was Skyrim or um, Fallout. You said one of those games, what you liked about it is that everybody has some strong memories from those games where they were able to tell stories about things they encountered in the game. Uh, this is just my opinion, but after seeing that Starfield wreck, I think that that game can have the exact same effect. Uh, because yeah. I mean, I, I I wasn't I wasn't sold on the game until I saw that direct. I said, "Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to get this game day one." So uh, I could definitely see that it has potential to be very successful. I think Microsoft will definitely get a return on their investment. Um, and yeah, I think the, the the numbers are going to surprise people when they see how well it it, it actually does do. I agree with that. I think this game's going to be huge for sure. But you know, again, Bethesda, but, go ahead, Carlos. Bethesda, yeah. Bethesda quote Richard Bailey Jr. from the Coalition. Put it on your <laughs> on your trailers. <laughs> put it on your tags. Put it on your on your on your cases. Say once Richard Bailey Jr. saw the thirty frames per second game, he was sold. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, I, I hope it does. I hope it does. I just don't see it. I just don't see well, it. Even I, before I, this, you- I just don't see it. I wish. I wish that was the case. And I could say, but you know what? Halo bombed. A lot of space games that have come out with established communities have bombed. So I just I, well, I, I think a lot of Call of Duty just, tried Call of Duty tried space. And it look, just because a lot of people jump the shark in space doesn't mean like yeah. that that I it look like a lot no of the most guy. popular like oh. shows and movies like space is it, it's it right up there with like fantasy like it's it's what you do with it um you can see bad fantasy you can see good fantasy like it's it's so generic it's like being like oh man that's a movie with cars like i don't know if people are gonna be into that but it's it's i think that people know what to expect from a bethesda game at this point they could set a bethesda game in like a 1920s circus and you people would still be like all right like it's it their 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 name recognition is stronger than ever everybody knows what a bethesda game is how it plays so the fact that this is just that like it you you almost don't even need to know uh, a lot no, about it no, 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 i know i bet we also know a lot of those people didn't jump over when fallout 76 came out they're like, ah, eh, forget it. We don't want that type of game. Well, that's like, well yeah, we know what they want an though. online you know Fallout that. game. That's why. Yeah. Well, plus exactly. the and then when, that thing is launched yeah. so bad. Yeah, but it, I mean, but eventually they fixed it up. They fixed it. It's great now, but it's too late. Bad taste. So. Yep. Yeah. But well, anyway, we'll see. Um, but anyway, anything else, Adam, about this whole um, FTC No, shit? that's it. It's just glad this is it. It'll, it's coming yeah. finally coming to an end. This month is definitely you know, done. And then uh, that's it. Move on from there. That's it. All right. And the last story of the night threw this in here just for pure fun. Uh, Nicholas Cage was hanging out with Hideo Kojima. <laughs> so uh, my prediction of is. Of course. Of yeah, course. Yeah. So my prediction is Nicholas Cage will make a cameo in Death Stranding because Kojima loves throwing out, throwing his like uh, Hollywood friends in that game. So. Yep, well, I'm well, calling it now. Well, Kate just said it. He will never turn anything down. And we know this because of all the movies he's in and stuff. He don't give a shit. So as soon as he heard about this game, and I guess what he's, he was on stage and he's with, was it, did he say how he got part of the project? Did he reach out or did someone reach out to him? They reached I, out to him and his, he said somebody in his household was a big fan of the franchise, most likely his, probably his kid. One of his kids. Yeah. 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 You see, there you go. He didn't turn it uh, down. He didn't turn it down. He's well, I mean, if you if you saw him on stage, like it was it was pretty like it's not so much that he just he just doesn't turn down things. He was actually really excited. Like the way he felt was like he video games were a space he's never been invited into before, and so it's kind of a new thing for him to do. And I'm sure at this point in his career, like fuck it, I'll try something new. Yeah. Didn't, didn't they also oh. stick him in Dead by Daylight? Yeah, like they him, did, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, not a yeah, character. That's it. Just that's him. it. That's yeah, it. That's it. That's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. This is well, it. Uh, <laughs> I well, I do. I do have some advice for Nicolas Cage. Uh, he better not get too close to Kojima because uh, Jeff Keighley will not uh, appreciate that. So <laughs> that's right. Just just focus on just focus on whatever role it is that you have for Death Stranding, but don't take it uh, further than that. 
No, Dude, between those two, like... Movie. Put him in one of his movies, <laughs> Kojima movies. <laughs> they are both just serial star fuckers, and I can see, like, that causing drama. Oh, man. <laughs> By the way, I'm looking at the uh, the tweet um, that Kojima put out, and the, the replies. Uh, somebody put, Nicholas Cage delivering boxes and uh, Death Stranding 2, and it's a picture of him as Ghost Rider. Does <laughs> <laughs> well, Kojima live in... Does he live in the United States now? Like, does he no, have a no. place here, or still, no? He, he has a he has a branch in the United States, but no, he he's still in Japan. Okay. So Nick Cage, it almost seems like Nick Cage after after he got off the stage with Jeff Keighley, just the next week he flew over to Japan. I'm like, you know what? I want to go to Japan? <laughs> no, you know, you know, Kojima approached him during that conference or something like that. He wasn't at the conference; he was in Japan. So. You know. Okay, then I don't even like like. Just, yeah, like, no, it's literally the next week for after that conference, Nick Cage just pops up in in Japan. In Japan. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe he could be he could be promoting Runfield. Don't that was know. pretty bad too. That was pretty bad. But you know, lots of people love Renfield. I don't know what the hell they were seeing because that shit was. Oh god. Pig is better though. Watch Pig. That's a good one. Cage movie came out this year. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. So. He's a uh, he. He seems to scan everybody in. So yeah, so yeah, expect him in Diff Stranding too. I, I'm calling it now a cameo at, at the very least. You know, <laughs> How they, they got me to do some motion capture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Good stuff. That's the show for tonight. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Rich, I want to thank you once again for uh, being on tonight, sir. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. Yeah. And Always a fun conversation. Yeah, man, for sure. And I'm glad you told us all those uh, fun stories. Uh, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Rich Bailey Jr. Uh, and of course, at the Coalition, as I mentioned, a lot of the games I spoke about, I've already written some previews of, but I'm still writing stuff from Summer Games Fest, as well as some other things that are coming up. So, I definitely would encourage you to check out the website, thecoalition.com, coalition with a K. You already know, man. Good stuff. Um, and Adam, what's going on with the uh, the podcast? Oh, yeah. There's a few things, a few things with that, but also um, over at the coalition, The Last of Us Part 1 is finally verified also for Steam Deck. And uh, I did a little coverage with that with the performance charts and benchmarks and stuff. And it works. It's between 30 and 40. Uh, the hardest scenes that was making it chug to 16 and 15. Those beautiful frame rate numbers are gone, which is great. And uh, people need to jump into that when it's on sale. Don't pay full price for that shit. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, it's not 60. Yeah, yeah, right? Oh, it's not 60. Um, but uh, yeah, we got to hopefully this week we'll get to another episode because uh, we were out of town. Rich was out. I was out of town. So we didn't get to cover the latest episode. Well, the past episode episode five of uh, fear the war but now episode six is out so we're gonna do a combo deal and, and bang both of those out and get ready for dead city that's coming in next week so uh that that's a much better show so I'm looking forward isn't to it this weekend oh the yeah 18th? No, that's the 18th it, it, what, what's the 18th what day is that i, I have no sunday. idea sunday so sunday then, yeah, sunday it, sunday there you go so that's that's when it yep that is when it airs on sunday so Yep, yeah. so I am Negan. That's over iTunes, Spotify, YouTube Coalition, of course, and I'm over at Coalition's YouTube. Good stuff. All right, people, we are out of here, so make sure you follow Throwdown on Twitch and Twitter. Join the Discord, where the conversations and the rumors are always popping. You can also find us on any podcast app by searching for Throwdown Show. That's two words, Throwdown Show. Uh, throwdownshow.com to listen to uh, past episodes. And if you've been watching us on YouTube and enjoyed the content, in videos such as I got to get out of that habit. Um, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of when our premieres go live. Links to everything down below. Once again, I was your host, Tony Polanco. And tonight I was joined by Emilio Lopez. See you next time. Chris Seeley. Hey, take care, everyone. Carlos Romero. Peace out. Adam Vale. Starship Troopers is such a good movie. Damn mm. right. I Brett, can't watch it. Yeah, <laughs> Brett Murdoch. For real it is. Yes. And Richard Bailey Jr. Have a good weekend, everybody. All right, people, you already know. We'll be back on Sunday later.
Tschüss. Peace.